So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We were talking yesterday about the idea that we begin with Allah's name and we end with Allah's name. We begin specifically with uh, with taqwa and with shukr. And today we want to look at the structure of shukr. What does shukr look like in detail? So yesterday we talked about the importance of that and what it means. But now what is it to be like, how do you express in expressions the idea of gratitude and shukr? So yesterday we alluded to the most basic expression. What is the most basic expression? What did we say yesterday? How do you express thanks, gratitude? What's one way? Saying, maaz? Yeah, alhamdulillah. I mean, specifically for Allah, you can apply it to any human being. But for Allah, the best way or the simplest way is saying Alhamdulillah. And that's how Allah begins the Quran. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So Alhamdulillah is the most basic form of expressing shukr. Just like the most basic form of expressing taqwa in the beginning of an act is Bismillah. Just mentioning the name of Allah. So Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah is an ocean of meaning and that's a topic for another day. There's so much to cover here. We could really spend the rest of Ramadan just talking about these ideas, shukr and, and, and hamd and, and what it means to praise Allah. But in general, for our purposes today, alhamdulillah or hamd or the idea of giving hamd in Arabic, the term is tahmid. So what is tahmid? Tahmid is when you praise Allah for a specific blessing. So that's important. So when you say Alhamdulillah, you're praising him for specific blessings of his, for specific favors of his. It always goes with something. And the first verse in the Quran is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So we say Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah for being the Rabb of the universe, the sustainer, the cherisher, the nourisher, the master of the entire universe. And when you think about why we say Alhamdulillah, it's because he's the Rabb, the Rububiya. That's the blessing that we enjoy, the ni'mah that we enjoy. That everything is under his control. We're not controlling our heartbeat, we don't control our organs, we don't control these body parts. Allah does. Every single blood cell, every single fiber of your being, every atom is being controlled by Allah. And it's through his mercy. So when you just think and reflect about Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, you can spend hours reflecting over the insights and the meanings of that. So every time we say Alhamdulillah is because of a specific thing. So in the Quran for instance, Alhamdulillah appears in my uh, research 27 times. And almost always it's linked to something. So we say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen as I mentioned. But then there are other ways the Quran says, for instance, Allah says, Alhamdulillahi alladhi khalaqa samawati wal ard wa ja'ala al-dhulumati wal nur. Alhamdulillah, because he created the heavens and the earth. And he made the system of night and day. So here we're praising Allah because of that blessing, the blessing of creation, the blessing of night, the blessing of day. The Quran says, Alhamdulillahi alladhi faddalana ala kathirin min ibadihi al-mu'mineen. Alhamdulillah that he favored us over so many other people in creation, among the creation, other servants of Allah. When you look at the circumstances around the world, we can but say Alhamdulillah. We're in a position where we're ahead of the majority of human beings around the world. People are in such difficult circumstances. We have roofs over our head, we have peace and security. There aren't bombs being dropped on our heads. We're not losing our family members every other day. And so on and so we're not living in poverty. So this great verse Allah is reminding us, say Alhamdulillah because Allah favored you over so many others in the world. And we also say, so all these favors and blessings that we enjoy, we say Alhamdulillah for them. Another great verse Allah says, Alhamdulillahi alladhi hadana wa ma kunna linahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah. Alhamdulillah, he gave us the ni'mah of guidance. And we would never be guided if he did not bless us with the guidance. So 
So we say Alhamdulillah for the blessing of, of, of Islam, for the blessing of being guided to the truth. So every time you see Alhamdulillah in the Quran is linked to a blessing. Almost all instances. There's probably two verses where you can make a case, maybe there's not a specific instance like Walahu alhamdu fil ula wal akhira, for instance, that all praise belongs to him, but there's no specific blessing mentioned in the same sentence. But if you read the verses, the blessings are mentioned prior to that and after that. So that's the first point. What is tahmid? Tahmid is to praise Allah for the blessings that He showers others with, the favors that He bestows upon us. And there's endless. So if you just think about when ta'uddu ni'mat Allah la tuhsuha. If you were to make a, a, a counting account or count the favors and blessings of Allah, you will never be able to count them. That means no matter how many times you say Alhamdulillah will never be enough. Because Alhamdulillah is, Alhamdulillah is linked to the ni'mah, the favors of Allah. And then, so that's tahmeed. That's how you express gratitude, shukr at his heart. But now we want to look at how you enhance that. Because... There are things you add to in the, in the in before it and after it that enhance that and make it much more powerful. So one way is, so you understand what tahmid is, that's the base. Now once you have the base, now we're building upon that base. So a more powerful way of expressing thanks is, you take the tahmid and you add to it before that, uh, tasbih. Tasbih is the act of saying subhanallah. So what is subhanallah? You have to understand subhanallah to understand why we're adding it to alhamdulillah. What does subhanallah mean? What's the English translation? Or Urdu translation, whatever you have memorized. Oh, praise be to Allah. That's alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. Glory be to Allah. So I don't know what that means. In English, it makes no sense. Glory be to Allah. Like That's maybe al-kibriya ulillah, azmatu lillah. But subhanallah, it's, it's a very imperfect translation. Yes. Subtarif and lucky. Is that okay? So my Urdu is not so good. Is that. Uh, that sounds like Alhamdulillah to me, though. Uh huh, good. To purify. So, how do you. Subhanallah means. It means Allah is free from any deficiency. Good, good. And. Yes. You, what were you saying? Okay. Okay. Good. And Maz? Okay, good. So, yeah. So, the last couple of comments hit the mark. Subhanallah. When you say subhanallah, it comes from the sabbaha, which means to pull or stretch. That's a linguistic meaning. So, you bring Allah far away from something. That's the sense. What does it mean? You elevate Allah above every blemish, every defect, every need, or like haja, every imperfection. So Allah is perfect in other words. That's what you're expressing. Allah is perfect. Allah is independent. Allah is not in need of anything. Allah is above every blemish, above every imperfection. That's what it means to say subhanallah. So this is a very powerful meaning. So. When he says subhanallah, so it's, now it's not linked to the favors, now it's linked to the deficiencies in the world. So in, for instance, uh, if you look at all the instances of subhanallah in the Quran, um, in one verse Allah says, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدَا They say, Allah has a son. That's, an, that's a terrible thing to say, right? So Allah says, they claim that Allah has a son. And what is his answer? Subhanah. So that's his immediate answer. Never. It can never be. Because having a son is having a need. You have to continue your bloodline. You have to, you're in need of something. That's, that's not something that's worthy of Allah. That's what Allah says as an answer. Allah says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yasifun. Subhanahu, how far he is, wa ta'ala, and above. Everything they attribute to him, yasifun, all the sifat they give him, all those imperfect attributes they attribute to him. So whenever you see subhanallah, it's linked to those defects and blemishes that people attribute to him. Um, Allah says, 
اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم أربابا من دون الله والمسيح ابن مريم. They take their rabbis and their priests as lords besides Allah and the Messiah son of Maryam. They take them as lords beside Allah. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا إِلَهًا وَاحِدًا But they were only commanded to worship Allah, one God alone. لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ There is no deity worthy of worship but Him. سُبْحَانَهُ عَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ Allah ends by saying سُبْحَانَهُ He is above everything, all those partners. So subhanAllah has that sense. Allah is perfect. Allah is far from this. So that's the sense of subhanAllah. Now, putting it together. So now you know subhanAllah. You know alhamdulillah. So what happens when you put subhanAllah in front of alhamdulillah? Now the beauty of Allah's speech and the beauty of Allah's attributes. When you say one thing, it means something. When you add something to it, it changes the meaning and enhances the meaning to a greater meaning. So subhanAllah has a meaning. Alhamdulillah has a meaning. When you put the two together, there's another meaning entirely. I mean, it's related, but it brings out an entirely new meaning. And that meaning that's very common in the Quran, you often have subhanAllah, tasbih, linked to tahmeed. How so? There's so many examples. Uh, for instance, in Surah Al-Rum, verse 17 and 18. Verse 17 is tasbih, verse 18 is tahmeed. So what does Allah say? فَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ حِينَ تُمْسُونَ وَحِينَ تُصْبِحُونَ وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَعَشِيًّا وَحِينَ تُظْهِرُونَ First verse, SubhanAllah. Allah is, um, SubhanAllah. You know, Allah is perfect in the morning and in the evening. And then the next verse, to Him belongs all the praises in the heavens and the earth in the heavens and the earth وَعَشِيًّا وَحِينَ تُظْهِرُونَ So subhanAllah walhamdulillah Now if you look at there's eight verse or six verses in the Quran where Allah links the two together in the same words What does he say? وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكْ What does that mean? سَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكْ Say tasbih and tahmeed. That's what it's saying. Sabbih is a command for tasbih. And bihamdi rabbik is tahmeed. So in six different verses, Allah brings this idea. Sabbih bihamdi rabbik. And what he's really saying, do the tasbih of Allah linked with the tahmeed of Allah. So, and then there's a great hadith. Who knows the final hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari? The very last hadith of the most important collection of hadith, the most sound reports from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The very last hadith. Anyone know that? Exactly. There you go. MashaAllah. So the last hadith of Sahih Bukhari, the first hadith of Sahih Bukhari is important. It teaches you something. And the last is very important. It teaches you something. So that's something amazing. Like books like that, they teach you where to begin, where to end. The last hadith has to do with tasbih and tahmeed. What is a hadith? Kalimatan. Two words. Two words. Kalimatan. Habibatani ila rahman Two words that are so beloved to Allah, rahman Khafifatani ala lisan. So easy on the tongue. Thaqilatani fil mizan. But so heavy on the scales. What are they? Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah al azim. So this is tasbih and tahmeed in a beautiful way. So this is unbelievable. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, and I'll, this is the last thing I'll say on this combination. He said, Man qala, sallallahu alayhi wa He said, and, and this is also in Bukhari and Muslim hadith. He says, Man qala subhanallahi wa bihamdihi fi yawmin mi'ata marratin huttat khatayahu wa law kanat mithla zabad al-bahr. Whoever of you says 100 times, subhanallah wa alhamdulillah, tasbih and tahmeed, 100 times a day, all of that person's sins will be wiped out, even if that's, they're so numerous like the foam of the sea. This tells you how important this combination is. This combination is so important. 
Tasbih and Tahmeed. The combination is so powerful. These two words are so light, but they have an ocean of meaning. They fill the scale. There's something so valuable. And the one who says this is a, is a sabab for the wiping out of your sin. So Tasbih and Tahmeed. So how are the meanings related? So first, you say Allah is perfect. And then Tahmeed is Allah is making others a little more perfect. How is that? Allah is perfect. Allah is complete. And then Tahmeed is where Allah gives His favors to us. So He makes us a little more perfect, a little more complete. No one is perfect, but Allah shares His blessings with us. So that's how it's related. So it's one thing to say, Allah, thank you for all your blessings. But then when you add to the SubhanAllah before that, you're saying, Oh Allah, you are perfect. You have no need to give us any blessings. But you give the blessings anyway, and we thank you for that. See how much more powerful the meaning becomes. When you just say, Alhamdulillah, Allah, thank you for your blessings, that's just one meaning. But when you begin with SubhanAllah, you affirm that Allah has no need to give us anything. Allah is perfect. Even if He didn't share His blessings, He is perfect. But because He still voluntarily chooses to favor us with so many blessings, so many bounties, we say Alhamdulillah. That's why Tasbih and Tahmeed is so powerful in combination. Now there's a third step, and that's the final step. There's a third step that makes it much more powerful. You have Tasbih and you have Tahmeed. What do you think the third combination is? Takbir or more precisely it's a different thing. It's slightly different. La hawla? No. Astaghfirullah. So the third element, so, so you take, so we're talking about shukr, right? The structure of shukr in the Quran. So it's alhamdulillah. That's tahmeed. But you add before it tasbih, it makes it more powerful. Now you add after it istighfar, it makes it even more powerful. And that's the complete structure of gratitude in the Quran. Where do we find that? We find that Allah says, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْهُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا This is Surah إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ When the victory comes to you and the help from Allah and you see large amounts of people entering the deen Allah commands at that moment Tasbih, Tahmeed and Istighfar How do you remember that? فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابَ This surah is very important to understand because it summarizes so many things for us um, There's a great instance, inst incident from the life of Umar ibn al-Khattab that teaches us what this surah really means So the surah has an obvious meaning but what does it really mean? So in Sahih al-Bukhari um, Ibn Abbas relates that Umar ibn al-Khattab when he was a Khalifa he used to bring me to all his circles he would always have me next to him to the point that people started complaining and some of the people were older some of the people were those who participated in Badr yani many years ago they participated in the battle of Badr the first battle of Islam I mean they were much older why were they complaining? how old do you think Ibn Abbas was? No, at this, this is Omar is a Khalifa, so he's probably like 18, 19. Or, so he was very young when the Prophet passed. He was just a child when the Prophet passed. So now fast forward to the Khilafah of Omar. He was still relatively young. That tells you how young he was in the time of the Prophet. So some of these people said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, Lima tadkhulu hadha ma'ana, walana abna'un mithlahu. Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, why do you have this boy with you all the time? And we have children, his age too. They're not here. So they kind of felt his resentment. So they complained. You will know. I'll, I'll explain to you why. So the next day or one of the, sometime after, he called Ibn Abbas in front of everyone. And Ibn Abbas was relating their hadith. He said, I knew something was up. Because he called me in front of everyone, probably show something or demonstrate something. So he being the obedient person he was, he came and he sat in front of everyone. Umar ibn al-Khattab recited the surah, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ And he said, what does this mean? 
He asked these people, what does this mean? So some of them were afraid to answer, they were silent. Some of them gave different answers. Some of them said, well, it means whenever you experience victory, you should have to make tasbih, tahmid, and istighfar. And others said other things. So he turned around to Ibn Abbas, he said, hada? Do you say the same thing? He said, La, no. And he said, Fa taqul? What do you say this means? And Ibn Abbas confidently, he said, Hada ajalu Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama a'lamahu lah. This is the life span of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah was informing him that now his life is coming to an end. So this is the deeper meaning of the surah. Because we know when the prophets complete their mission, then Allah calls them back. And Ibn Abbas realized that because he had a deeper insight of the Qur'an. And then Umar, he said to them, Wallahi, I do not know any meaning other than what he said. So this surah really was a reminder to the Prophet ﷺ that now your mission is coming to an end. Soon you will see the victory, Fathu Makkah. Soon you will see massive amounts of people entering the deen. When that happens, this is the end of your mission. The end of your mission, what did we say yesterday? The end has to be with shukr. So he gave the Prophet the perfect structure of shukr. The end of your mission should be characterized by this. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ تَسْبِيْهْ تَحْمِيدْ and istighfar. So this is what he was, what he was informing the Prophet ﷺ. Aisha radiallahu anh, she used to say that after the surah was revealed, I never stopped hearing the Prophet recite in his prayer, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi astaghfiruk. Different forms of tasbih, tahmid, and istighfar in his rukur, in his sujood, in his salawat. And she said, Kana al Quran. What was he doing? He was implementing the Quran. The Quran, this verse was revealed. So he was implementing that in the in the in the salah by saying tasbih, tahmid, and istighfar frequently. So this is the complete structure of gratitude. And what Tanweer was saying, takbir, you know, Allahu Akbar, how is that related? Because he was thinking of what we do at the end of our prayers. What do we do at the end of our prayers? What's the, uh, the adhkar at the end of salah? We take our fingers and we say something a certain number of times, and we say something else, and we say something else. There are three things. What do we say first? Subhanallah. How many times? 33 times, okay. What do we say second? Alhamdulillah. How many times? 33 times. And what do we say next? Allahu Akbar. And so also 33 or 34 times. Let me share with you the final hadith. This hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari, very interesting hadith. Um, some people came to the Prophet sallallahu and they said, Ya Rasulullah, dhahaba ahlu dusuri bid darajati wal na'im al muqim <coughs> They said, O Messenger of Allah, the people of Dusur, people of wealth, they've taken everything. And he said, Kayfa dhaka? The Prophet asked him, what do you mean by that? They said, Sallu kama sallayna. They pray just like we pray. Wajahadu kama jahadna. They participate in the battles just like we participate in the battles. But they do something we can't do. Wa anfaqu min fuduli amwalihim wa laysat lana amwal. But they're able, they spend out of the wealth that they have, and we have no wealth. That's something we can't cash them with. So, what should we do? So the Prophet suddenly gave him a solution. He said, Shall I not tell you something? If you start doing it, you'll pass them. You'll get ahead of them. They won't be able to catch up with you. And no one will be able to catch up with you unless they start doing the same thing. What did he say? He said, تُسَبِّحُونَ فِي دُبُرِ كُلِّ صَلَاةٍ عَشْرًا At the end of every prayer, make tasbih ten times. وَتَحْمِدُونَ عَشْرًا And make tahmid ten times. وَتُكَبِّرُونَ عَشْرًا And make takbir ten times. So in this hadith it's ten times. You can also do it ten times. There are other versions where the Prophet taught thirty-three times. It's also correct thirty-three times. So this is very important because there's in the deen there is flexibility. And sometimes we memorize thirty times so busy at work, we get the whole 
adhkar because we don't have time to do 33 times. Do it 10 times. Everyone can do it 10 times. So this is a hadith in Sahih Bukhari. So they started doing that and they were very happy. And then the story we learn later on what happened is the people of wealth found out they started doing it too. And they complained to the Prophet and the Prophet said, ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ That's the fadl of Allah He gives to whom He wills. So there's, what can you do? So here, what was the Prophet teaching us? Ending of your prayers should be with shukr. The perfect structure. The perfect structure is tasbih, tahmeed, and istighfar. Now you might say, okay, but he said takbir at the end, Allahu Akbar. How is that related to istighfar? It's related if you understand the relation between the two. You share the first two components. But istighfar, what does istighfar mean? When you say astaghfirullah, what does that mean? <coughs> Seek forgiveness. For what? Be precise. Shortcomings, right? So istighfar is always linked to something. Everything is linked to something. What is istighfar linked to? It's linked to your problems, your sins, your mistakes, your shortcomings. That's why in the Quran Allah says, وَاسْتَغْفِرْ dhambik." Istighfar of your sins. And Allah describes the believers as فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ They are the ones who seek forgiveness for their sins. So istighfar is always linked to your shortcomings and my shortcomings. Okay? So the three components together, what are they? Allah is perfect. Allah is complete. Tahmeed, Allah makes others a little bit more complete. And istighfar, we are incomplete. We are imperfect. We are so much in need. So that's how it's perfectly linked. How is Allahu Akbar related? What does it mean when he says Allahu Akbar? What does that literally mean? Yeah, Allah is greater. Not the greatest. The meaning is Akbaru. The greater. And then there's something you have to fill in the blank. So Allahu Akbaru Min. So it means Allah is greater than your shortcomings. So it's the same thing. Istighfar is looking at it from another angle. Allahu Akbar Takbir is looking at the same thing, your shortcomings from a different angle. So the three components in the perfect structure of gratitude is Tasbih, Tahmeed, and Istighfar. Allah is complete and perfect. Allah shares His blessings with others, i.e. He makes others a little bit more complete. And finally, you acknowledge that you are absolutely incomplete, imperfect, and you have shortcomings. <coughs> so, there's so many subtle lessons here. Like after the salah. Imagine after the salah you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. The first thing you had to say was Alhamdulillah. So you just prayed and at the end, if you imagine, first thing you say, Alhamdulillah, I just did 20 rakahs. Isn't that like a little bit sense of arrogance can come in? Imagine the first thing you said that after the 20 long rakahs in MCMC. MashaAllah, you finish almost 11, 20 sometimes. Imagine the first thing, Alhamdulillah, we did it. So that's arrogance. That's not the best way to end a salawat. That's why the first thing you're supposed to say, Subhanallah, Allah never needed these prayers. That's the perfect way, the most munasib way to end the salah. You're acknowledging that whatever you just did, Allah didn't need it. Allah is perfect. This is the best way to begin the end of the prayer. And then you say, Alhamdulillah. And then you say, Astaghfirullah. You acknowledge your shortcomings and imperfections. So this is a beautiful, beautiful structure of gratitude with Allah Azza wa Jal. And if you think about it, just want you to reflect over tasbih, tahmeed, and istighfar. And also reflect over it, apply it to others. When you're grateful to other human beings, it's the same pattern, right? So if someone helps you out all the time, like um, if, if there's someone who's always helping, right? And you want to thank them, you say, you call them up, hey, Tanri, you're always helping me, thanks a lot, I'm so grateful for you. Every time we get a ticket in the parking lot, you fight for us and you get it way in the city and stuff like that. So you say, man, you're so helpful, thank you. That's gratitude, right? But if you add the element before it, um, you know, tasbih, tasbih is praising Allah that you never needed to do that. So you would say to him, if you, if you just extrapolate, of course there's no relation with human beings, but you would say to and we, hey man, you're so good for, to us, you do so many things for us, you never had to do that. You never really have to help us, but you still help us. That's tasbih and tahmeed. And then istighfar, if you add that to the component, you're saying, you know what, 
I'm always messing up. I'm always parking in the wrong spot. So Tanvir, you don't have to help us, but you still help us, and I'm always messing, and I still keep parking, make dua for me. So that's the structure there of gratitude. That's the most complete version of gratitude. Now, this is just an illusion because, you know, I got a ticket on Eid. Not me. I would never do that. But my knucklehead kids, they're late for Eid, and they missed the Eid prayer, so they parked on Route 18. So I sent a copy of the ticket to Tanweer, and his response was LOL. <laughs> So I had to pay it after that. But anyway, had he helped us, this is how you would thank him in the best way. So tasbih, tahmid, and istighfar. How do you remember the three? Fasabbih bihamdi rabbika wa astaghfir. May Allah give us tawfiq to understand these things properly and to end with tahmid. Hada wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.